hi everyone and welcome to the fourth day session it's like fourth day and uh, session four we have already co covered uh, three videos where we have talked uh, extensively on all the different topics now we are moving we are working mostly on the react side we have set up a redux toolkit all the slices and all and i was just playing with these slices how these really works so in the last video we were talking about uh, something like this so this is our simple toolkit right i will just hide things which are not required okay so this is our current state right now user inside we have a user and these are the properties but uh, so how i'm able to populate the questions first of all so we already have a overflow page right so from the overflow i'm just dispatching fetch questions and we have already created a slice for it right what this slice is doing is it is making api calls and fetching the, all the data and then based on the promise either rejected uh, fulfilled or idle or pending we are populating the redux state the only thing which i don't like is too much nesting questions then question then data then questions we can reduce it like inside this user user is actually a reducer this is the root reducer object questions here we can still have a questions and then all the properties inside it right not like further nesting so these things i will be taking care and how we are doing a create async thunk i was earlier i was doing promises and it didn't really work so i have just converted that to the async async callback function so it is making a call to this giving us the response dot data back and then we are just putting that response data inside the payload so maybe we are doing wrong here it should be response dot data dot because if you see the api call when i reload the page how we are fetching the questions i will reload the page and then we'll see so we are getting response dot data dot questions so response dot data dot questions i should return okay now it should not create that much level of nesting if we just check okay yeah it has reduced it right now resp questions and then question it contains three different attribute like okay the status data and error now i think it's uh, look uh, simplified and nice now we will do some changes in the api side so let's go to apis because currently it is giving me only a couple of attributes right so we can fetch all the attributes from the question question controller give me all the questions question service so here uh, select columns dot join so columns we can fetch all the columns created at let's say what all columns we have in the question entity we have a uh, user metadata user id comment user so these attributes so these columns also we can add in the search api user id user metadata and comment i will add those columns here this is user metadata user id comment and the date when you actually published it so when this was created it say created at and updated that these columns should be enough and then there is a updated at okay uh, we just need to restart the apis i think these are starting automatically and then if i reload this page now it should fetch the new data and we are getting everything right user metadata is having email so this is good we are getting all the data i was just playing around with this okay how can we uh, do use this redux toolkit uh, asynchronous call which is using this async method if you take a look on to our apis sorry ui components from here i'm just making a fetch questions and it is using this create async thunk and this is your api call and how we are doing proxy if you remember uh, create reactor provides this proxy attribute so here you can do the proxy you don't need additional proxy middleware this package.json proxy attribute will redirect will forward your calls from port 3000 to 3001 without without giving a complaint about cross origin resource sharing issues 
so all the request will be proxied to 3001 from port 3000 because 3000 our front end is running 3001 our apis are running okay so this is uh, what is happening now we will start building our components i can see that my setup is good we are uh, able to fetch the redux data and populate the redux data inside the state we are using these slices redux toolkit slices answer slice question slice so how, how how my state looks like if you see because this state will become complex so here these questions is actually the all questions which we see on the on the landing page here you can fetch 10 20 100 now inside questions there will be another attribute selected question because what happens is there will be another route where you where you can click on selected questions and we will fetch all the question answers and the comments of that questions and the question data itself so here there will be another attribute inside this question slice which is selected question selected question and that will also be of type question this questions of type question which is of type data here we will add the typings later because this should be the questions array okay selected question currently whenever these state is getting resolved okay this dot state okay currently we are just updating the state let's say uh, because here it is this is giving you all the questions but uh, at a particular moment we want to fetch the questions by id so here i can create another thunk fetch question by id so here i will be passing id as a string and i will be making a different api call than this questions and i think we already have an api call which is giving me get question by id which also returns i think the responses all the responses we have in system about the question so this is the question question by id okay i think this is the api call we need to use then so first of all question by id okay question by id also get call we don't have so quickly let's add another api so this is our api source app domain we are going to the questions question controller question get by id so this is what i will do so get question by id get questions and uh, we don't need to worry about user params we are just passing this dto and here get questions question by id let's say this is appropriate and here we are passing the param so with the question we can also fetch the, all the answers of the question so get question by id go to the question service and here we can just i will just copy existing methods and just change the attribute method name it's a get question by id we are getting the params so we don't need to validate the authorization because we are reading the data not writing so here question report dot find one we are getting the question id so i will just call where id is question id is param dot id and then we will have a relations relation with answers so what it will do it will give me uh, that single question object and inside that it will give me all the answers Okay, I did change on the wrong place. It should not be in the delete question. Okay, this is the place I need to change. This is param.id. Okay, now this is good. Get, get question by ID. Find one ID and the relations answers question we have the relations answers so we are good question controller this is delete and this is get question by id so it should be get status code okay we don't need auth guard here return create and questions with responses successfully these i'm not updating i hope you can just put your message here 
get question by id and here this is how it will works now we can play with uh, the swagger a little bit we don't need authorization for these apis so question question by id okay i will just pass some params okay i will copy uh user id is question id okay still we are not exposing the question id that is wrong so we also need to expose the question id from the search api calls i will add another column which is id and then going to the api call call this again and we are getting the id this id i can copy this is the question id and i can get and all the information about the question by get by id okay so no content strange maybe i am returning a different status code question controller this is get by id this is a delete status okay return get question by id okay i am not returning my bad so now we are returning the data find one where id equal to this and i will call this again we got the data answers there were no answers submitted for this question id i need to do the login for that we can do that so this is my token i'm getting right this token i can use okay token is still here i will authorize my i can, now i can submit the answer for this question i can also update this which i never tried question text is let's say i'm putting something like okay some big text technology node.js java or whatever unauthorized that is strange because okay maybe i didn't create this question that's why i'm authorized because i didn't create i cannot update it so i will create a brand new question and i will paste this uh, whole text i'm creating a new question so my question is created and this is my question id now if you want to play with update api you can do and this is updated now you can also submit the answer because maybe we are just playing so i can submit the answers for this also question id answer and my answer is also same answer is here comment is just uh, dummy text so i have submitted answer now i can fetch this question by id so that should give me all the answers which have been submitted for this question and the question object also okay you can see the answers right so this is important so when you are making a because there will be another uh, react uh, router page where we are going to show the question and all the answers of that question so here this data we can populate on that uh, page because this is a question id question details and all the answers submitted to that question so we are what we need to do is we need to trigger this call that should give us everything instead of making two calls okay this give me the answers of all the questions so we can just trigger this call question by id get call so going to our front end app again so this is how the full stack works right this is like very basic project i'm not dealing with any architecture or microservice deep concept it's very basic uh, app, uh, application i wanted to build which i can complete end to end in few hours so this is my store uh, this is my question slice here i'm just making this call response.data because response.data is giving me everything the whole object itself so fetch question by id now here we can have a selected question and then selected question is of type question which has a data inside data we will push all these things so again we are going to have a three more uh, extract reducer state okay this is closing till here we'll copy this
three more states. Now the API call is fetch question by ID. One, two, three, fetch question by ID, pending state, fetch question by ID fulfilled, fetch question by ID rejected. Okay. Now the thing is we should not be able to override the existing data which we have. So whatever the state we have, I will be updating only the selected questions, not the question object. Here we are updating question. Here I am going to update selected question. Selected question and selected question. Inside data you will get the whole object. And now if you want to just simply play with this, then I can just hard code some ID and try to fetch the data and see the Redux state from our overflow component. I do have this another ID so I can dispatch another action which is fetch question by ID and I need to pass the UUID right so let's play with this and check our Redux state okay so we got something right okay this Redux state is kind of simplified and how I'm able to see this Redux dev tools because in the store I made this dev tools true so that you can just to play around with this otherwise you should make it true only for development environment for production dev tools should be false and if you are not specifying by default it is false so I have a user inside user I have object questions I have a questions it should be questions s selected question single question object and there is a data inside this there is a selected questions and then there is answer so this state is somewhat readable not like okay too much nested inside user questions questions and selected questions this data is getting okay it's interesting right where this data has gone i can see only this data what about uh, because we dispatch two actions right so if i reload the page again okay something is getting reset right if you see the question data gets null so i didn't expect that but let's see what happened question slice here i'm trying to update the question okay state question state i'm updating questions and here i'm updating the selected questions this is redux dev tool uh redux toolkit this may act as strange but here i'm not overriding any state i'm just updating a single property Okay, maybe I did some mistake oh yes I think this is the initial state right so inside initial state I didn't put a selected question that will also have the same set of properties maybe it will fix uh, with this change question state have a questions and selected questions selected questions okay Uh, it's not fixed i guess okay question then data data is getting empty initially it is fetching the data and then it is getting reset okay so what i should do okay this is the state let's say i, I will try to do some debugging right so whenever this uh, we get the data then what is the current state state dot selected state uh, this is not simple uh, redux uh, reducer where you just uh, return the new state by not modifying the current one here we are updating the selected question data is null okay if i try to just see what is the state right now when the call has initiated and when the call has received a result so state dot it's question state question state has a two properties action dot payload i will try to see on console dot log uh, full field payload is an array this is actually the proxy object uh, which you cannot debug in the payload i'm getting the answers and the question object that we are getting from the api okay let me check the the documentation how it works maybe uh, we are overriding the state 
okay and it was very easy fix i was just checking the code and okay these types what is the action name was same right action name should be different it's like fetch questions this should be fetch question answers right so rest everything is same the only thing is you need to have a different uh, action names while sending it to the extract reducer right because everything is uh, everything the state change applies based on these action names fetch questions fetch question answer and i can show you that inside questions we have all the questions and here we have selected selected questions selected question object and it's all answers okay so let's work on our uh, front end before that i need to create one more api so this is our api spec right now if i so we have all the questions question answers we also need to have something someone wants to add a comment on the answer and someone wants to upvote and downvote an answer right so what we can do is we can just do a put call on a particular answer id put or patch call so let's do that what we need to do here is just a put call on the answer id so we already getting question id answers and this is the answer id right so we are actually trying to update the answer which you have submitted which you have created update question update question by id and here we need a dto question by id dto there will be another dto we can create which will extends question by id dto question answer by id dto and we can extends question by id dto so it's like uh, creating a dto from an existing dto and here it will be answer id which will be of type uh, uuid answer id of type string and uuid you can put some example like some uuid do we have any uuid i can just copy that and put that as an example that this is how uuid looks like okay so this is the question answer by id dto we'll put that inside answer controller so it has two parameters now because there are two qu query uh, path parameter you are sending question id and the answer id you will get this parameter and here we also need to pass the accent type because you are doing an upvote and downvote so upvote and downvote you are doing to a answer submitted for a question so here it can be a put call and uh, we can so the route can be something like this so api v1 question id answer so it will be like this questions id question id so particular question i'm getting all the answers a particular answer and then you can just say action type which can be upvote or a downvote right a simple api design here we can pass that as a query parameter right so we need to create a query dto for this so we will create a query dto query okay so this is query and i will just say i am passing something inside a query parameter and this is action on answer dto this dto we will create it should be of type enum export class answer dto and it will be of type string so i will try to draw this so this is action type okay this is of type string and this would be of type is enum let's say we'll create another enum export enum action type which can be of two types upvote down vote okay 
how we define it uh, export in a action type okay it's comma is missing so this action type enum so this is uh, is enum of this type example here description is this is for swagger okay action type and it's a uh, enum what is the enum is action type is the enum or example value is we can choose example values like action type dot of boot i think this should work and this is is defined okay so we added a class validations action type we are passing as a query parameter we should also check uh, our server is healthy action controller we will import this and then we are, we will also send a query so body param and then query queries of type action on answer dto so there are third this is third parameter and inside query we will be passing okay what is your action type okay maybe i did update a wrong method i need to create an update question by id so here i will just create a copy of this create answer question and this is all about update question by id why it is complaining three argument but got two okay yeah i got it i created a duplicate so this is taking two argument i will just change this to now all the errors are gone here we need to now the same thing same validations we are doing here upward downward anybody can do should be a logged in user so we just need to validate okay question exists and then answer report dot save body here what we are doing we are just updating the question id right so we can just try to make it little different here id is answer dot id so we are getting two properties from here one is question id and another is answer id we need to change the dto type this is my put call right uh, okay question answer by id dto so i can get answer id and the id so this answer id we already have that we are updating this property and we are just saying and we need to get the up vote and down vote right so we need to get the current up vote current down vote okay and then we need to decrement and all right so it's current answer and here we will do the same answer repo dot uh, find this dot answer repo dot find one where id is answer id so we got the answer object right so if it is up vote and we also need to get the query param if it is up vote and down vote so i'm just saying query and this is action type so here i will just check if action type is i have already enum action type dot upvote that means i need to increment the upvote counter okay ta, 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 ta. the thing is we also need to initialize these as an integer upvote downvote number default zero can i set default zero no answer contains null value okay because some of the records already contains none value so either we clean the database first and then we can make this change because on the fly we are changing the database that is not good but here this is just only for poc's examples so this is our answers i will just remove all the answers and now if i change this okay it is still not allowing of what of relation answers contains the null values it should work now because there is no record containing null values so we are initializing them with a zero 
up vote and down vote okay so these are the two properties controller we are going to the answer surveys and if the action type is up vote we need to increase the latest up vote is answer dot uh, what is this up vote up vote plus one this is we are updating and then it simply save operation we need to do so we can just say await this dot answer repo and we already have validated that there is answer exist with this id answer repo dot save and i'm saving this entity answer id and i'm just saying upvote is okay answer repo so i'm updating the upvote why it's not coming up save latest upvote okay because we already have the answer so if uh, let's say if you are passing a wrong answer id and if you don't have not found exception otherwise we have the question we have the answer and we got the current of vote we are just increasing that of vote by one and then updating it now if it is not a vote if it is a down vote then we will do something like this or it's a optional else we can simply do return because if it is not a vote then it is obviously down vote let me just see if we have written everything correctly so if it is up vote we just do this otherwise we will return it we need to return it so else will become optional so if answer this is closing otherwise i mean i will just run a prettier action type of vote increase the up vote if action type is not up vote then it's a down vote because that is the only thing we are allowing it's a down vote minus down vote plus one okay sorry because these are the two different attributes up vote and down vote so whatever you click that will increase no no decrement latest uh, down vote and here we will be updating down vote simple and this api will be available now to us i can just reload the page and i can see something like this right I can send up vote and down vote. This is the question ID. This is the answer ID. Both are UU ID. And it doesn't contain anything in the body. We need to remove it. If we are passing anything in the body. And or you can you can keep the body optional because sometimes you want to update the answer. So we can use this put API for updating the answer also. It's like so we can do two things in just one call. You, if you want to update the answer text. Uh, you can also pass the body because we are passing the body here. And we can use this body update question by id currently we are not using this body anywhere but while saving let's say if you are passing the body parameter we can just say something like this so whatever you are passing in the body that will also be updated here correct so this is how i think these are the only apis we need uh, we also need a comments like fetch all the comments for a particular answer id so we are building just rest api i can we can quickly build something on that also i just need a one api which fetches all the comments first of all create a comment and then fetch all the comments i think you can do it easily a comment entity we have this contains the answer id and it has a relationship with answer so while fetching the answer we can also fetch all the comments created for that comment module okay it's all empty i need to write this so this is comment module let's write it i mean there is no point of skipping this so there is a comment entity then there is a comment service then there is a comment controller and let's see if we are putting the right name comment service comment service we will create and this is all about questions question i answer id and then comments either we create this as a nested or we will just take the answer id 
So how should we do this? Uh, this is all about REST API design. So I want to add a comment to an answer. So should we traverse to from the question to the answer to the comment or we can just uh, give simple API answer forward slash answer ID and you can add a comment right answer answer ID and on that answer you can add a comment so it's like this so it will be answers authorization enabled and this is our comment service okay we are just going to create answers ID and this is going to be comment because we are creating comment and this should be a get call which will just give you all the comments for a particular answer it's the get call answers answer id and comments fetch answers so instead of fetch answers it will be fetch comments for a particular answer id right so very simple comment entity comment module which contains comment service this is comment controller this is comment entity comment entity we are initializing so here we are going to use answer entity and comment entity both because we are going to deal with answer entity also then comment controller comment service provider and we can also export this this is the comment module i will just change the the names this comment service should give me the comment service so i will just copy not the answer service yes i can just copy something from here create a comment service it is going to x have two repository access comment entity comment entity and the repository type is comment entity and this is a comment repo and anybody can do the comment on a question so this is answer entity and comment entity okay that we already have so answer entity why that is creating a problem here okay we need to traverse back answers and then answer entity so everything is good these details we don't need here we will see what we can add so this is a comment service go to comment module we are importing comment service comment controller comment entity comment controller okay this we need to update the name this is comment controller and accessing comment service and then we can create a method okay create answer create comment of answer create comment and we need to create a DTO this is question by ID DTO it could be just we will just replace it by answer by ID DTO So we need to create a DTO also comment.dto.ts So action type these enums we don't need So it will be answer by id DTO Then use this answer by id DTO everywhere we wherever we need So this is okay here we are going to pass the body and the id because we are creating a comment and then answer body dto it would it would be comment by id dto so export class comment by id dto sorry comment body dto and i will just allow you what is required and what is optional based on that comment text is required parent id is uh, default null will it break or not sure because this is nullable so comment text user id we will get from the token so comment text is only required and answer id we are getting from path param 
so it should have comment text so it's just like a string parameter right so i will just copy and i will just replace this as a answer text this is a comment text is string min length whatever the basic basic validation we can add comment body dto and then we will just replace it as a comment body dto import these dto's from comment dto and then create comment for answer so we are passing body and this dto we will create this method inside our service async i mean now these are like very basic things i'm doing I hope now everybody who is watching these videos are able to build at least the basic REST APIs. Right, instead of like writing some nested microservices or complex microservices. These all here are we are just playing with very basic stuff of the NestJS. So this is create comment of answer. This will give us uh, answer ID and the comment body. So we can do the same stuff we were keep doing. So I will be just checking okay this answer does exist if answer exists then i will just update the create the comment record okay create answer of question i can copy this and i will change this things inside it so this is comment service here instead of question repo i will be just using answer repo dot find one based on this id so if i get already the answer then we are good we have the answer then i can create the comment using comment report save body and this is the answer we need to pass because uh, comment is associated to the answer if you see inside comment we are passing answer object so it should be i will should be able to pass that's it it will create a new comment and then when it comes to fetching the list of comments that also we can do fetch all comments of an answer right so here we will be just getting the param id i mean the answer id first of all okay the answer exists and then or what we can do simply is we already can use the relations api so this is where close and then relations and if you see the relations how the relations have been configured in the answer entity comments right this this is the relations so we can fetch the relation comments that's it and we can just return directly answer report dot uh, find one where close and the relations fetch this comments also with your answer object and then we will just pass this to the controller this is going to be answered by id dto simple right no 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 magic here is a fetch answers fetch comments and then we can play with this a little bit how this is working status code okay status code created 201 await this dot create comment of answer we are passing answer id and the body we may see errors i didn't check what is required what is optional so i need to change the api tags also okay here inside answer controller because we need to add these comment module in our domain module and uh, x is comments so let's add all the, the required things so we have comment module i will add this comment module in our main domain module so all the controllers gets exposed all the controller services and all it is slow comment module so i'll just import it manually import comment module from it's little slow comment comment start comment module okay now we can just explore our api spec and i can see the comments so let's say i'm fetching all the questions first
so i got this question id okay for this question id i will see what all answers we have and i will pick one answer id okay there are no answers that's strange so we can submit one answer first for this question id whatever the dummy text so i got the answer id for this answer text comment question object and this is the answer id upward zero downward zero this is my answer id so i can play with the comments like creating a new comment for this answer id okay this is working so for this answer object my comment record has been created and i can fetch these comments also based on the answer id so this is the answer object and all the comments added to the answer right you can also do upvote and downvote let's say i want to just upvote this so how can i do this this is patch call sorry put call upvote this is my answer id and what is the question id for this that i need to see i think the question id was i picked up this record only a2 let's see if this was the question id so this was the question id and put call okay up vote you can see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so these are the up votes right now if i do down vote like because there may be a different user currently i'm not checking that only a user can up vote a down and down vote only once not like randomly he can click and keep adding the up vote and down vote so this is down vote 8 but there is one strange thing so let me see if i can fetch this answer id so this is my answer id i will try to fetch all the answers okay oh sorry i was using the different api i need to use the comments for answer id yes i can see upvote and downvote i was seeing only downvote so this is like the answer has been updated with upvote and downvote but now you need to play with this user id carefully because we also need to populate the user id now at multiple places this user id is missing why because we are not passing it so in the comment controller you should be logged in user for creating a comment and similarly for upvote and downvote answer controller here you are doing put call right so you should be using this user object also are we not using user object questions question controller this user this user will always be there wherever you have auth card so answer controller who is submitting the answer that we always needs to know so post answer So add all missing imports and then pass the user object also user metadata create answer of a question user metadata and here you can get the user id so here i'm getting uh, passing the body and here i can just set a uh, user id equal to user dot uid so wherever you are creating try to populate the user id so here i'm creating answer so i know who is the submitter of this answer patch answers similarly while creating the comment we should be doing this so answer comment controller this is where we are creating comment and i also need to add the auth card so this is at the rate user user metadata add all the missing input so create comment of an answer here we are getting user object and i can just pass the user id user dot uid so everywhere we need to populate this user id like this is the user who is the submitter of uh, the comment on this answer 
and then similarly we can fetch because everywhere i made this optional but mostly all the places it should be required wherever we are using this auth guard so let's add the auth guard also so auth guard is in question controller because comments you should be able to create only if you are logged in user and similarly question comment answer you should be able to submit the answer only if you are logged in user similarly for put so here update question by id here you can add additional code okay who can do a foot and downward this is i'm leaving on the other developers who are watching this simple logic okay so this is i mean i will say these are the complete apis which we need for this application not more than that because these are more than enough to play around with the the ui all the questions all the answers and all the comments of a particular answer and then there is a feature of upvote and downvote of a particular answer that this answer is right and i'm satisfied for this stack overflow answer i can do upvote and your upvote will be recorded through the apis okay now let's see let's build our landing page so let's create our ui components these are our two different routes auth route right and then question and then i mean i just changed uh, this feed with questions so with questions there is we can say another route which is questions with answer okay these are you can say three different uh, route folders question with answers questions and auth and we are already creating these routes here overflow component login and so this will be our component so instead of this we can just change this name to questions component right and this will be questions overflow okay and then we have another component which is questions with answer naming can be whatever you decide these cannot be perfect comments questions with answers and then overflow so that is just another route when you are looking for a particular question with answers then we can use this and the default route is questions for the landing page so let's uh, design our login page and then landing page so our login page is simple what we have is just a some simple button so this is our simple auth component auth.tsx so login.tsx here we will create some couple of classes to create a center aligned button div class name we will say login container we are not using tailwind and all i will be just writing a plain classes login container and then this is closing div and this button will go inside this div okay we can have a login content another class inside this div class name login content and inside this there can be one image with logo image source here we will put logo logo and this is simple image tag we have and the logo we can import from the logo folder import logo from i think there is a logo kept here i can just pass this logo image source logo and then there is a button right login to continue and then we will add some classes to here uh, to this button also so class name button login and we already have some css class added which we can add to this button i will just try to format this okay this looks better and here we are importing login.css 
okay i can just import login dot css and this is where our react app is running inside login.css we have a login container we have login content because we can just use simple uh, flex box here this is the login container we need to center align this button with some basic styling so what we can do is login container this is display flex and then align item center justify content center height will just give the whole vertical height and width whole vertical width okay and then box sizing bordered box simple this is like outside container then we have a login content i think this is the class name login content right this will also be using display flex flex box align item center flex direction what should be the flex direction because we just have one button so we can just add column and then login content we have image login content and inside that we have an image tag so how can we apply a styles for the image we can just set width is 200 pixel and margin is 20 pixel and object fit contains simple right now if you if our application is running i can check my login page i mean currently we are logged in but this is how our, our login page looks like right this is central aligned display flag justify content align item center justify content center and then we can add some classes to this button tag we have so we can show some nice and clean button so this is the button tag we want to apply styles for it so we can just add some margin padding and all background color and all so padding 10 pixel margin we can say 50 pixel from the top and 0 pixel from the left and right background color just put any background color is black color is white outline none border we don't need border so i'm just applying the basic styling right border radius is three pixel on family mono space do we have mono space and cursor what is the cursor behavior it should be pointer and letter spacing also you can do letter spacing 1.1 pixel that's it uh, so if we just see the logout okay this looks nice right not that nice but at least this can work for our styling this is our simple login page right now we need to create a landing page that landing page should be able to display the header footer and all so that we are going to do in the questions or that can that can be a simple layout because header footer sidebar is going to be common for both these two routes showing all the the questions and then showing the question with its answers so we are going to create a simple components let me see what we are doing here So we are going to create a landing page, right? So stack overflow overflow page. So here we can import all the other components like the header, sidebar, the feed and the widgets. So let's say we are working on this overflow page. I will remove remove couple of things like the logout and all. Here we are going to do it different way. I was just playing with this. That's why I put all these things here. Now, what this component will render? This component will render uh, the whole landing page. So that should have a the header, sidebar and all. So I will be just adding the default classes. So inside this we are going to have a overflow header. 
this component we will create overflow header and then div class name overflow content and inside overflow content uh, we can have all the child components so there we are going to create sidebar and then we are going to create a question feed and the last component is widget which we are going to show on the right hand side so these are a couple of components we are going to build so there is a stack overflow header and then inside a stack overflow content overflow content we are going to create all the child components like there is a sidebar in the left and there is a question feed coming from top to bottom and then there is a right hand side widget so these components we need to construct so let's uh, create a question oh overflow header okay so i will just create these things here overflow header dot tsx and then we need sidebar dot tsx what other components we need question feed and uh, question feed widget tsx so these are the components which we need to construct like overflow header so we'll copy b6 stuff from here overflow header and then sidebar so this is our simple header component if you see uh, from our overflow question feed dot tsx this is our main file right here we are importing question overflow so overflow header and then there is a sidebar and then question feed and then there is a widget component in the rightmost right so overflow header contains so uh, i try to design something on this let's see what it contains so this is overflow header right which is display flex let's try to zoom this in so this is our overflow the whole header component and inside this we have a, a question overflow header right and this is the content overflow has a display block i mean this can be a display flex also question overflow this is question header which contains display flex align item center position get index because this is header and then th there is some box header we have added right and then jet index just to keep it on top of the layer so align item center display flex you can see when you say display flex and align item center all the items are centrally aligned position sticky so it will even if you scroll this will stick to the top and then inside this header we have header content that header content is justify space between i mean this is like a simple flex right and uh, align item centers all the items are centered justify content space between right align item centers uh, so only the thing is this is a vertical vertically it will vertically center the all the items display flex so if you don't put a display flex then they will they will arranged like on top of each other or inside this we are going to have all the divs because this is a flex container inside flex container you have a child nodes there are four nodes which it is arranging on the horizontal flex row right so this is the logo then there are icons there are four icons so the because it's again another div and it's a flex container so this is the display flex and inside this you have four different different icons so these icons we are getting from the material library material ui mui material ui so this is the display flex this is also display flex input all right this is the input component display flex align item center border padding and all because this is some svg icon and we are having an input text field and then we have the remaining remaining of header component which contains the icon 
so this is also going to be display flex align item center because this is the flex container it has two child items one is the logo i mean the profile icon and then another is the button because when you click on to this button we can show a model pop-up where you can ask uh, where you can raise your question so question is okay this is my question uh, you will save it your session already exists so you would be able to submit a new question so mostly all the sub form submission happens through the model pop-up but this is how it works uh, so we have header header component is divided like this so we have a display flex and all the divs are for just aligned on the horizontal row because we didn't put a flex direction anywhere what if i do flex direction let's see because this flex direction is by default automatically row align item centers justify content space between and then all these items so this is like a simple flex box header component we have right and then this is overflow content in this we are going to create a body and this overflow content either you can use a css grid or just a flex container because we are going to divide the body this is the flex container which is coming whatever is coming uh, below to the header we are going to divide it into the three grid columns one is where you can just show the left uh, sidebar then in the middle we are going to show the feeds question feed and in the right side we can just show the widgets whatever the widgets like the job openings and all these things so this is very basic design i will just walk you through what all do and what all styles we have applied so this is the overflow content so inside the overflow content we have uh, this whole body section right overflow content which has a margin top and this is a display flags justify content center you can see this is justify content center there is padding top background color and width is 100 percent the whole width of horizontal width now this is overflow content which is same it's just a flex container display flex uh, flex direction row and this is having maximum width of 1200 so from the whole viewport whole horizontal width it will just consume only 1200 pixel so if i just remove this then it will cover the whole width same as the overflow contents this is the overflow content without s so it is same it is having some uh, padding from the padding top and bottom is zero padding left and right is 10 pixel flex direction is row display is flex right otherwise they will come on top of each other display flex means flex direction row and they can be aligned inside one row these are the three divs which are arranged in a single row so this is the first div second div and third div it's like a flex container right flex container with the maximum width so if you remove the maximum width they will co cover the whole width either you just set uh, justify content center between and all justify content center will also not work space between space around right so this is it is covering the maximum width width is 100 percent so if you just do you can play around with this so here we can say maximum width is 12, 1200 pixel and it contains three divs you can see this is the flex container which contains the three different divs first is sidebar sidebar is just a margin right and it is just a flex container where these all these divs are vertically stacked this is should be using simple ulli sidebar options and single sidebar option okay and then this is the feed question feed right which is a second div of our container display flex flex direction is column so all the divs will be arranged vertically not horizontally because because this is a row which has three div and each an individual uh, div is again a flex container with the flex direction column so first flex is row and then uh, uh, the inside these each and every div is also using uh, display flex but the flex direction is column here also it's column here also it's column so you can see uh, margin top we already have and inside this we have a sidebar options so flex direction column display flex and flex direction column otherwise if you just make it as a flex direction not column or row they will be arranged horizontally right so we need to make flex direction column so all these sidebar options are vertically stacked and i'm just styling uh, individual items okay padding bottom it's like individual buttons so this is simple sidebar 
now here is a feed here also again this is a flex container and display flex display flex and flex direction is column right and here it is we are just providing flex grow flex string and flex bc property so it will decide how much individual id inside this flex container can grow and shrink similarly there is a flex widget that is also a flex container flex direction column so it's like a very simplified design that's why i don't want to walk you through about the css and we can just get it done quickly these are the flex container with the flex direction row and inside this each and every uh, div is having flex direction column and display flex so this this one and this one this is like a quick uh, stack overflow question box when you click on it we can show a pop-up where user can submit a question and all the other questions will be displayed here we will have a upward downward comment add answer all these options available here okay so it's like very simple design i i didn't try to make it complex because we are going to do uh, the integration part and how these questions are being shown i am just using this uh, our slice so if you look into our overflow here i'm just doing a dispatch okay where is that so this is the question feed component and inside question feed what i'm doing is fetch all the questions right this is this is what i'm dispatching and i'm using youth selector to get the all the list of questions from the redux uh, state so here is my redux and you can see i'm getting all the questions and how can i access using selector questions dot question dot data right so that same thing i'm doing here in the question selector questions state dot questions dot question dot data that i'm accessing inside a question feed and i'm passing that to the child component and showing all the questions with all the controls like you can upvote downvote add a comment add answer to the question that's like a simplified design and this is what uh, this is where we will stop the the ui design we will implement a couple of more components live and then you can extend this example because this is like a basic design now you can extend it to add a comment add answer and all those things so there will be one more session i can do where we are going to fetch all the questions uh, uh, allow you to submit the answer of a questions add a comment and show them on the ui using this redux uh, toolkit because what we need to do if i need to fetch a data i will dispatch an action currently this is fetching all the questions there is one more route which we have that where we are going to pass the question id and on that component we will get this id from the route params and then we will uh, trigger a call fetching all the answers of that question right and this is how we will proceed further so this is very simple ui design uh, simple components i will push this code to the github and provide a description so maybe we'll uh, add a couple of more things on the component side and the integration side but our apis are 100 percent done our front end is you can say 70 percent done here we just need to create another route where we can fetch the questions and all the answers and allow you to submit a questions and a comment